Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Logan from Logan for Liberty. How are you all doing? As you can tell, we are going to take the political compass test. I also plan on doing a values test and, of course, isidewith.com. Um, if you're somewhat familiar with my channel or you have subscribed to me, you could probably guess where I'm going to go or you could use a little bit of deductive reasoning and look at my channel name and then figure out where I'm probably going to land. With that being said, I still think it'll be a good idea to go through each question and analyze them and let me explain why I believe what I believe. So, without further ado, let's get started. Page 1 of 6. If economic globalization is inevitable, it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interests of transnational corporations. That's a loaded question. Extremely loaded. Um, economic globalization is in inevitable. Also, I want to know how they're using the word corporation. Are they meaning it? Are they using it to mean business? Or are they using it to mean the actual definition of corporation, which is a company or group of people authorized to act as a single entity, legally a person, and recognized as such in law? Because I don't think a institution should be recognized as a single entity or legally a person, because it's not. I think it should be recognized as it is, as a business, as an institution. That being said, uh, I don't think economic globalization will benefit corporations other than maybe allow them to expand, or sorry, businesses, other than allow them to expand. Uh, I'm going to say disagree, cause this, uh, I hate this. This is such a loaded question. Because for the most part, I think economic globalization serves humanity. Hence, in the United States, because of globalization, for the most part, some things have become rather expensive because we can produce it more cheaply or we can import it from other countries rather cheaply or we can make money off of exports. And I don't... I'll say agree. No, I'll say disagree. Slightly. Only because I don't think... <sighs> this is tough. Whatever, I'll just say agree so I can be virtuous. I always support my country, whether it is right or wrong. I disagree. Well, it depends. Because I don't know if they mean, will I support my country or will I support my government, the government of my country. Because personally, I make a distinction between my country and the ideas that it was founded upon versus the government that is currently in control of my country. In other words, to explain it in a different way that makes sense, a country will exist, but the administrations that are put in power in order to administer justice or write legislation are separate, in my opinion. Um, so I say disagree. Uh, because I'm assuming they mean the government of my country. I love my country, I hate my government. No one chooses his or her country of birth, so it is foolish to be proud of it. I disagree. I think you can be proud of your country. It doesn't matter what you choose or uh, whether or not you chose your country of birth. Pride and choice, having no choice, aren't mutually exclusive. You can be proud of something that you have done, of a goal that you have reached. You can be proud of an amazing accomplishment, and then you can be proud of who you are regardless of whether or not your choice has brought you to where you are. So for me, I am proud of my country because our country, well, yeah, you, you can, um, you can be proud of somebody else that you have no control over because you can recognize that somebody else has done good for the world or is virtuous or humble or has a big heart, or is just a genuinely decent, successful person. I am proud of the United States because of two main documents, the Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution, the ideas that the United States was founded on. 
I wish we were consistent at the very beginning and abolished slavery like James Madison, the father of the Constitution, tried to do. So therefore, I disagree. Um, although I, I'm empathetic, I can be empathetic towards somebody who holds that opinion. Our race has superior qualities compared with other races. Um, well, I think some races, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say it has to do with race based on skin color, but certain races do have certain qualities that are superior to others in certain ways. For example, a black person isn't going to burn easily out in the sun because that's where they that's where black people for the most part adapted to live and white people will burn in the sun therefore i think that's a, a superior quality of black people with that being said white people can because of their lighter skin consume vitamin d a lot easier but I don't think that my race is superior, and I don't think black people are superior, but I do think there are certain things about each race that's slightly better. And plus, <clears throat> not all black people are the same. There's a, there, there's a difference besides, I mean, the skin color is similar, but there's a difference between Western Africans and Eastern Africans. One of them is extremely good at marathon running, on average. The other is extremely good at... 100 meter sprints. I'm just going to say disagree because I don't think any race is superior over the other. <clears throat> but I'm not going to say strongly disagree because there are differences between different races that give them an advantage over certain things. Sometimes, not average. I look at... Ah, oh, people are going to think I'm racist. I'm not racist. I don't think anybody is inferior. Or anybody any race is superior. I think individuals are superior over other individuals, but I recognize a trend between different races. That's about it. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Ah. So I'm going to say disagree. The only reason why is because while the enemy of my enemy is a decent and pragmatic, sorry, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I think that is a pragmatic principle that has some truth but the enemy of my enemy is my friend isn't true if the enemy of my enemy is also a rival of mine for example in world war ii we supported the ussr we supported russia and guess what happened after world war ii was over who was the next enemy russia um in the 80s under the reagan administration we supported the Mujahideen. And what happened with them? Well, they became the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. And what happened with them? They became our enemies. Guess what? We supported Saddam Hussein against Iraq. Or Iran, sorry. We, we gave weapons to Saddam Hussein, even though he was using chemical weapons. And guess what? He became our enemy. And we toppled the country. We killed that dictator. Which is why I don't always agree with the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So I say disagree. I I don't... I think we should have diplomacy. I think we should have an active role in foreign policy. I just don't think our current foreign policy is working. I think in World War II we shouldn't have taken a side. I think we should have attacked both the Germans and the Russians. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, with that being said, sometimes you go to war with the country and they turn out to be your friends, like Japan, and Vietnam doesn't really care about us. So there's that. Oh, also during World War II, we were basically on the side of China. But look at what happened after World War II. Two of our enemies, Germany and Japan, became our allies. Two of our allies, Russia and China, became our enemies. So I don't take that 100% to heart. Military action that defies international law is sometimes justified. I agree. 
and I'm I'm typically a non-interventionist, but the United States military should only be held accountable to one country, the United States. F fuck international law. Because if somebody, if I'm a sitting president, somebody bombs my country, since I believe in the Constitution, I'll go to Congress, and I'll ask if I can go to war, and I'll ask for the necessary funds, and then if they approve my ability to go to war with a foreign country that just bombed us, you know what I'm going to do? I will use everything under the book to win. I would... I would hire rebels in the country to firebomb the Capitol buildings with Molotov cocktails. I will drone strike every government building. I will send troops to take every woman and child and citizen, drag them out to the fields, and burn down their neighborhoods. And that sounds gross, and it is gross, because that's what war is. Our military, they're not humanitarians. They are trained killers, and they should be used as such. Only in self-defense, though. I, I, I'm not saying that we should kill citizens in war. I'm saying you intimidate the citizens and make them understand that your government brought this upon yourselves. And just so we're clear, I disagree with our entire conflict in the Middle East. There is now a worrying fusion of information and entertainment. I strongly disagree. Um, I don't think that they need to be mutually exclusive. I think you know, a good example, um, if you're a conservative or more right-leaning, Louder with Crowder, S Stephen Crowder's show, extremely entertaining, extremely informative. I think that's fine. It, it can be entertaining. Information shouldn't be boring. It shouldn't be. And some of the best ways that kids learn is when it's interesting to them. Because it's entertaining to them. <clears throat> Instead of just sitting down and reading boring stuff. With that being said, if your job is to give out information, you should be concerned about whether or not your information is accurate. But you can make entertainment with information. That is 100% fine. Make it interesting. Make it pop. Make make me have fun. Make me happy that I'm learning about something. People are ultimately divided more by class than by nationality. I disagree. Because even people... Okay, so here's why I disagree. Um... We have a good example like Iraq that showed us, or 9-11, that showed us that people across all different classes, and I mean, if you took 100% of all the people and you made different classes for each five section of 5% or even 1%, so you had 100 different classes based on 100% of the population, because let's be realistic, that's how it would go. Some people would concentrate more on the top, and then more on the bottom, and then average in the middle. That happens. But after 9-11, we were, most of us, unless you hate America, we were all united after 9-11. Understand that. It, it brought us together across all races, across all classes. None of this mattered. You're more likely to hate somebody or be a rival of somebody from another country. So I don't think... And I'm going to say moderately disagree simply because during peacetime or when we for, we're so used to the war that we're in, then we start getting divided by class. But understand that trailer, trailer park crash, some of those white people that love America... They're no different than the rich, white, suburban people that love America. Controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment. 
Okay, it depends. Um, if you're saying controlling inflation, do you mean that I think the government should have a role in controlling inflation? I'm going to assume that they're not. I'm going to assume that we should solve the issue of inflation more than we should the issue of unemployment, which I would moderately agree. I'm not going to say strongly agree because of the implications that the... or Because I think it implies the notion that the government should come in and control inflation. I think the markets will dictate for the most part, ultimately, how inflation is. Our government has caused inflation, the Federal Reserve. You guys should eat, should read In the Fed by Ron Paul. Um, unemployment, I don't give a shit about, simply because... The reason why I don't care is because, for the most part, you can go and find a job if you really wanted to. Okay, it, it, you... If we, ha if we had a free market, okay, ideally... And I'm basing this answer, my answer, off of ideally having a free market. Ideally, if we had a free market, you can sell lemonade or sell bottled water without having somebody calling the police on you. Unless you actually poisoned somebody. I think unemployment is something that shouldn't really matter. Because, theoretically, you could go to a commune. You can go to somebody's private property, and they're letting other people stay on their private property. The only thing you have to do is work. And then you get fed. This commune has a farm. Do you see what I'm saying? Inflation is what hurts people. <clears throat> because if you make, uh, let's say you make $200 today. $200 a day. That's not bad. It's not. Depending on where you live, it's not bad. It's not amazing. If you live in a smaller town, yeah, that's pretty good. If you live in a bigger city, yeah, you could do better. Why is that? Because the dollar is inflated between rural areas and urban areas. So I think that's a bigger issue. Especially if your $200 becomes less valuable over time. Because corporations cannot be trusted to voluntarily protect the environment, they require regulation. <clears throat> I'm going to say moderately disagree. Um, I know we have historical examples of corporations. Again, they're, they're saying corporations instead of businesses. I'm guessing the person that made this doesn't quite understand the difference between a corporation and a business because they are not the same thing. Similar, but not the same thing. You, you can say they both have a profit motive, but completely different. Um, so we can look at examples of past industries, past businesses, past institutions, polluting and destroying the environment and not caring. But if you look at it, that has more to do of a time of ignorance, has more to do with a time of ignorance. When we didn't understand much about the environment, when we didn't understand that a lot of these things that we are doing pollutes. With that being said, I am not saying strongly disagree because there is some role that the states or your centralized government can play. I just, so for example, don't pollute water, don't pollute the air, and we need to find out reasonable expectations or reasonable limitations, and then we leave it there. The EPA, in my opinion, the Environmental Protection Agency, with the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act, was 100% justified. And then they accomplished their goals, and then what happened from there? They grew into this bureaucratic organization that serves no purpose anymore. I would say give the EPA back to the states, keep the Clean Water Act, keep the Clean Air Act, and then let each state decide what each state needs, and that way you can direct resources to where they belong instead of this bureaucratic, centralized, federal government institution. And then the EPA's goal shouldn't be to write laws because they have no legal authority to write laws. The EPA should instead be an investigative or data gathering, gathering institution. And then from there, the legislators of either each county, state, or federal government should be able to use this data. And then we go from there. <clears throat> but I'm not saying strongly disagree because I understand that... We need some, a night watchman state to keep them accountable. With that being said, I disagree because I don't think that we need that. I think private property will help, too. If your property is being polluted, sue them. And I understand the line gets a little uh, murky when we're talking about air. 
from each according to his ability to each according to his need is a fundamentally good idea. So basically, this is a Marxist idea. Um, <clears throat> each person should contribute as much as he can, and then each person should get as much as he needs. Um, I would agree only in... Not in principle. How would I agree? I would agree in a free market that you should do what you can according to your ability to get what you need. But I don't think that you should be required to do the maximum amount of work according to your ability. Unless it's expected from your employer, of course. And I don't think you should be given stuff because you need it. So I'm going to say strongly disagree. I'm not a Marxist. You should work for what you get. And what I, what I like to say is because a lot of left-leaning, more egalitarian types, whether whether or not they are Marxist, Leninists or whatever, they tend to go, well, you, you need basic stuff like food and water, otherwise you'll die. And I'm, you know, kind of listening to this, processing it in my head, and I go, okay. Let's say you are alone in the forest. There's nobody else around you. Who's going to give you food and water then? Nobody. You are. You are responsible for getting your own food. You need to move your body and you need to do work. And however you utilize your body can generate a decent amount of wealth. You need to tend to your agriculture or you can pick berries. You need to hunt or you can grow cattle. You get what I'm saying? You're going to die if you don't work in a fort, if you're alone. And that's a principle that I think we should apply across the board. You will die if you don't act. Nobody is obligated to give it to you, for the most part. Don't try to stretch this thin and then come up with some, well, what if you call the ambulance? Let's not do any of that, because that's not what I'm talking about. Wow, this is going on pretty long. How long have I been doing this? Wow, and I'm not even... Hmm. Yeah, that's taking pretty long. Wow. Okay, so... Let's keep going. Um, it's a sad reflection on our society that something as basic as drinking water is now a bottled, branded consumer product. No! No, it's not! I strongly disagree. If you own property and it has water and you want to sell that water, go for it. And plus, selling water, allowing water to be bottled, gives us an incentive to truck water over to desert areas where water is not an abundance resource. That is why the United States is so massive and why it is so immensely spread out. We have, and this is also why rural, not rural, urban areas can get water. Because we can truck it in, we can ship it in. We can trans, we can transfer it from point A to point B with pipes. Because there is an incentive to do it. Otherwise, people stacked on top of cubicles next to other people in cubicles with tall skyscrapers. They want to get any water. Where the hell are you getting water in Los Angeles? You understand what I'm saying? And plus, if there's a source of polluted or salt water, but we need water, what are you going to do? You're going to clean that water. And guess what? You're going to sell it. Guess what? You made a profit because there's an incentive. So, no, that's stupid. Why would I be... <clears throat> and this goes back to um, what I was talking about if you were alone in the forest. How amazing would it be if you were in the forest... And you, somebody could give you water if you gave them some berries. You have an abundance of berries. You're growing berries, actually. Somebody else has water. There's no water in sight. So you decide, hey, I'm going to buy your water. That way I can put more time and energy into tending, tending my garden and my cattle. Or hunting and gathering. So, it's stupid that people actually think that. 
Land shouldn't be a commodity to be bought and sold. Strongly disagree. Land should absolutely be a commodity. Private property rights is where it's at. Um, it is regrettable that many personal fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing to their society. Mm. Um, I disagree because, uh, okay, I moderately disagree and I kind of agree. Because I don't know what, what they mean by uh, people who contribute nothing to their society and manipulate money. If I'm given a small loan of a million dollars... And I don't have to lift a finger, but I invest it right into other companies, and other companies grow because of my investment, and I make a profit off of that through interest. I do think I'm contributing something to to society, even though all I did was manipulate money. I helped these businesses grow, and then I made money. But now, if you're talking about people that use the legal system, the legislative branch to bottleneck competition and don't really have to work because of that and they acquire money through corrupt means, then yeah, I agree. They're not really contributing anything other than paying taxes. So I'm going to say disagree because for the most part, I think you don't have to do anything, but you can still make money and contribute to your society by investing. Um... So, I'm only moderate, because I wish there was a neutral stance. Protectionism is sometimes necessary in trade. I strongly disagree. Protectionism is a terrible policy. Terrible. It hurts you. It just hurts you. It hurts your people. The only people that it benefits are the business owners. It hurts the consumer. The only social responsibility of a company should be to deliver a profit to shareholders. Um, no. The responsibility of a company should be to pay its workers, uh, deliver a profit to its shareholders, make a profit. So I'm going to say mo uh, moderately disagree, because that's not the only social responsibility of a company. They should compensate employees and then deliver money to their shareholders but I don't, I don't think they sh their social responsibility should go one way or the other the rich are too highly taxed strongly agree our progressive tax rate okay is really just punishment for rich people it comes out of envy for rich people let's just put it that way those with the ability to pay should have access to higher standards of medical care of course if you have money why should you not pay the best doctors or the best institutions to give you decent health care. Governments should penalize businesses that mislead the public. No, I don't think that's a job. I disagree. I don't think that's the job of the government. But I do think a government should exist. Because if you, if you personally buy a product that does something that it wasn't supposed to. Then you should be able to sue that business. And we need a government to allow you to do that. A genuine free market requires restrict <laughs> a genuine free market requires restrictions on the ability of predator multinationals to create monopolies. Uh disagree. Uh theoretically in a monop in a free market, there is no legislation that bottlenecks competition. So the only way you are creating a monopoly is by well, being a good business that people like to buy money from. With that being said, the monopolies, because people like to go, well, look at uh, this monopoly over here, right? Look at that monopoly that existed in history. Most of them had ties with the government legislature or government bureaucrats. Most of them, most of the monopolies that we're talking about didn't just happen on their own. And then uh, uh, we have patent laws that make it impossible for anybody to create an alternative of the same product. That's not a free market. And the freer the market, the freer the people. Strongly agree. Next page. Wow, we're actually uh, <laughs> we're busting through this thing. We're on page three after a half hour. Abortion when the woman's life is not threatened should always be legal. <clears throat> oh, it should always be illegal. I'm going to moderately disagree. Um, if you make abortion illegal, it's 
just going to make abortion more dangerous for the woman. I understand about the baby. I don't think the baby should be killed. Personally, I wish it had better answers, um, which is something I like about I Side With because I could say it's a state issue. But for the most part, this is asking me my uh, my general view, so I understand. Um, um, I think there should be some restrictions on abortion, especially if the woman is not threatened. Um, hmm. 20 weeks, guys. It's, it's five months. And that's the current law of the land, I believe, for the most part. All authority should be questioned. Strongly agree. It doesn't mean... Yeah. No, that's it. That's simple. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I agree moderately simply because if somebody takes your eye, not only should you take their eye, you should also take their tooth. If somebody takes your tooth, take their fucking eye. <laughs> that... <clears throat> and that goes on to what I said about my foreign policy, what I personally think our foreign policy should be. If somebody bombs my country... I will do more than bomb their country. I will bomb their country and tear down their city. Tear down their institution of government. And steal their resources while I'm at it. <clears throat> Taxpayers should not be expected to prop up any theaters or museums that cannot survive on a commercial basis. Strongly agree. Schools should not make classroom attendance compulsory. Agree. I think parents should have an obligation to control their own kids' education. Um, if, if a kid who's 16 doesn't want to go to school and instead they want to work or they want to get their GED and then go to community college, they should be allowed to. All people have their rights, but it is better for all of us that different sorts of people should keep their, to their own kind. Uh, disagree. Um, on the basis of race, I don't think that's they should. On the basis of whether or not you're a criminal, <laughs> I think you should. But I, I typically don't disagree. Um, I do think that we're a more tolerant society when we intermingle. With that being said, I don't think anybody should be forced to. And I don't think... People naturally do that anyway. In my high school, it, a good... Over a quarter of my high school population was Mexican. And in the lunch cafeteria... Mexicans typically would sit next to other Mexicans. And then the rest would be a sea of white. You would have some white people that would be good friends or that would be dating one of the Mexicans sitting at the Mexican table. table, And then you had the Mexicans who weren't really that much into Mexican culture and liked American culture better, therefore sat next to white people. And then, of course, Mexicans that dated white people, and as a result, they would sit next to some white people. Uh, races naturally segregate themselves. I don't necessarily think that they should or that it's beneficial, but, you know, they'll do what they want. Good parents sometimes have to spank their children. Um, moderately agree. It's natural for children to keep some secrets for their parents. Strongly agree. Nah, moderately agree. Possessing marijuana for personal use should not be a criminal offense. Strongly agree. Your body, your choice. Uh, the prime function of schooling should be to equip the future... Generation to find jobs. <clears throat> I don't think there should be any prime function of schooling. I think each school, I think if a school can, they should offer a wide variety of skills. I think some schools, depending on some areas, should help people find jobs. I think other schools should help kids prepare for college. And if a school can do both, that's 100% fine. Right now, for the most part, our education system, I can tell you this because in my rural, my small rural town, we have three industries that are extremely successful and that generate a lot of money for this town and where you can easily graduate high school and make 15 bucks an hour at the lowest wage possible. We have two fact, no, three different factories. And when I went to high school, I never heard about them. I never heard anybody saying, yeah, you can go there and in a couple of years you'll be making 20 bucks an hour. They'll even help pay for your education and trade so you can start making 26 bucks an hour. I did not hear that at all. Nobody told me that. They encouraged us to go to college. College is useful, especially if you're in the STEM field. I'm not one of those, oh, college is a scam. Because in the STEM field, it's not. But not everybody is meant to go to college. 
Not everybody is capable of going to college. Not everybody really wants to go to college, but they're not aware of different opportunities. We should teach them how to find jobs, how to prepare for college, how to be entrepreneurs, and I think we're good. So I'm going to say moderately disagree. People with serious inheritable disabilities should not be allowed to reproduce. Uh, disagree? Strongly disagree. Disagree. Strongly disagree. Yeah, I don't think anybody should be forced by the government not to reproduce. Um, I think people with bad disabilities should either use in vitro fertilization or just take responsibility and say, yeah, I probably shouldn't have kids. Maybe they can adopt. Or, like I said, in vitro fertilization. The most important thing for children is to learn to accept discipline. Disagree. Maybe from parents they can accept discipline. That's about it. There are no savage and civilized peoples. There are only different cultures. Uh, disagree. Some, yeah, yeah, I disagree. Those who are able to work and refuse the opportunity should not expect society support. Well, I can't talk. Support. Strongly agree. When you are troubled, it's better not to think about it, but to keep busy with more cheerful things. Disagree. <clears throat> First generation immigrants can never be fully integrated within their new country. Disagree. I've seen it happen. Uh, what's good for the most successful corporations is always ultimately good for us all. See, they keep saying corporations. They keep saying corporations. A corporation and a business are not synonyms. So, but for the most part, yeah, what's good for corporate, moderately agree. No broadcasting institution, however, independent, its content should receive public funding. Strongly agree. Next page. Our civil liberties are being excessively curbed in the name of counterterrorism. Strongly agree. A significant advantage of a one party state is that it avoids all arguments that delay progress in the Democrat. Strongly disagree because no one ideology, unless it's mine, should have a monopoly on the government. That's dangerous. That's called it's called dictatorship really. That's called totalitarianism. Although the electronic age makes official surveillance easier, only wrongdoers need to be worried. Strongly disagree. The death penalty should be an option for most serious crimes. Disagree. In a civilized society, one must always have people above to be obeyed and people below to be commanded. Str I disagree. I believe in the necessity of hierarchies, but I don't think they should be... Uh, I don't think there should be the commander. And then... The <laughs> yeah, no. <clears throat> um, abstract art that doesn't represent anything shouldn't be considered art at all. I don't care. I really don't care. Although I'm not a postmodernist, so I dis moderately disagree. Or I moderately agree. In criminal justice, <clears throat> punishment should be more important than rehabilitation. Disagree. Unless you're a rapist or a child molester. <clears throat> Even a murderer. It is a waste of time to try to rehabilitate some criminals. Agree. The business person and the manufacturer are more important than the writer and the artist. Agree. Moderately. Uh, art is important. It can give you fulfillment uh, or help you find fulfillment, especially entertainment. But we need people that produce. Mothers may have careers, but their first duty is to be homemakers. Oh my god. Uh, I don't think the first, I don't think a mother's first duty should be to be a homemaker, but I do think a mother's first duty should be to help raise the child for maybe the first year because it's a crucial important part of a child's life. But they put in homemakers, so I disagree. Mult moderately disagree. Multinational companies are unethically exploiting the plant genetic resources of developing countries. Disagree. Sweatshops are good. Every, let me be clear, every country, every developing country has had sweatshops, including the United States. It's a necessary part of growth. It's called a growing pain. Making peace with the establishment is an important aspect of maturity. Moderately disagree. <clears throat> Astrology accurately explains many things. No, no, it doesn't. You cannot be moral without being religious. Moderately disagree. 
Charity is better than Social Security as a means of helping the genuinely disadvantaged. Strongly agree. Some people are naturally unlucky. Disagree. Moderately disagree. It is important that my child's school instills religious values. Uh, moderately disagree. Sex outside of marriage is usually immoral. Uh, moderately disagree? A same-sex couple in a stable, loving relationship should not be excluded from the possibility of child adoption. Disagree. Pornography depicting consenting adults should be legal for the adult population. Strongly agree. What goes on in a private bedroom between consenting adults is no business of the state. Strongly agree. No one can feel naturally homosexual. Uh, moderately disagree? I would say it isn't. Ah, oh, whatever. These days, openness about sex has gone too far. Moderately agree. Now let's see where I stand. <clears throat> uh, let's see if I'm going to get... Margaret Thatcher. She was a right-wing authoritarian. Oh, well, I guess on um, economics, she wasn't. But uh, I guess on certain social issues, she was. Adolf Hitler was a more centrist right fascist. Stalin, far left fascist. Uh, or authoritarian. Gandhi, um, far left. Libertarian, Friedman, far right, libertarian. Yep, this is exactly where I th Every time I take this test, I find myself in this general area. Never, never higher, never lower than this. Um, I've been farther, I think. Uh, so... Milton Friedman is a little more right-wing than me. So that is... I am a right-wing... moderate libertarian. I think what that means is typically on cultural issues, I tend to be a little more conservative than the... the far libertarian... right libertarians. Um, I believe in some traditional institutions like marriage, things like that. Thanks for watching my video. Uh, look out for my I Side With quiz. I'm probably going to do something like this once a year to see if anything I believe in or have said that I believe in will have changed. I think that'd be interesting. Peace out, guys. Have a good one.